Okay. <clears throat> nice to see everybody today. Um, just let me finish getting this set up here. So I want to read a few places and uh, speak about a particular phrase I <clears throat> read in a verse and couldn't get out of my mind and decided to speak on it today. In John chapter 12 and verse 21, it says, so these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, sir, we wish to see Jesus. And this, this thought of of people that were seeking the Lord Jesus and different, I have a few different examples that I wanna read about, um, about those who, who sought the Lord Jesus. Um, so first of all, in Mark chapter 10, very well known passage here about the blind man Bartimaeus. Sorry, I'm having clear trouble here. <clears throat> okay. Mark 10 and verse 46 says, and when they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And, we, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man and saying to him, saying to him, take heart, get up. He is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And, imme and immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Now, just getting a kind of a picture, picture or thought of this, this scenario, this situation, this blind man named Bartimaeus, he was poor. He was a beggar. He had very little, um, very little, very few possessions. And uh, this man, basically every day, all he was able to do was probably be led or find his way to a spot where he could hear that people were coming by and ask for alms or money so that he could survive, so that he could buy a little bit of food, so he could take care of himself. But um, as, as I've heard that some people, like somebody that would be blind, other senses would be heightened. This man would have been listening. He would have been relying on his ears for knowing what was going on. And so during this time when the Lord Jesus was, was on this earth, he probably heard the stories of people talking that were walking around. And maybe he was asking questions. Hey, have you heard about Jesus? Have you heard what he's doing? Have you heard about the miracles he's done? How maybe he's heard that blind men received their sight, how people were brought back to life, how lepers, they were cleansed, you know, all these different things that he probably heard people talking about. So one day he hears this crowd. He can hear lots and lots of people. He can hear them walking. He can hear them talking. And he knows something's going on. So he says, what's going on? And finally, somebody says uh, that the Lord Jesus is, is coming, that the Lord Jesus is walking by. Now, I don't know what was on this man's mind before that, but maybe he wondered if he would ever have a chance to meet the Lord Jesus. But at this particular time, he finds out that this man that everybody has been talking about is here right now. And he had a chance to maybe meet the Lord Jesus. So when you consider this man, he didn't quietly say, hey, could somebody take me to see Jesus? Could somebody, could somebody take me over there? He yelled. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He's yelling. He's probably jumped up. He's probably waving his arms. He's making a scene. And people were telling him, be quiet. The Lord Jesus, Jesus, you know, doesn't want to have anything to do with you. Be quiet. He didn't listen to anybody else because he wanted to see Jesus. He sought the Lord Jesus. He cried all the louder. He yelled. He screamed, Jesus, have mercy on me. 
And the Lord Jesus, it says he stopped and he said, call him. And the, the people that were, the people that were there, they said, listen, he's calling you, come on. And so they led him to the Lord Jesus. They led him to see the Lord Jesus. And when he got to Jesus, Jesus said to him, what would you have me do for you? What is this one man? What does this man want? What, what more could this man want? The one thing that everybody else had around him that he couldn't have his sight. He couldn't see. And he says, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. I want to see. And the Lord Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. He gave him his sight. It says immediately he was able to receive his sight. And, you know, I know this might be a silly thought, but, uh, you know, when, when the people said, uh, take heart, the Lord wants to see you. Uh, you know, sometimes you watch TV and maybe it's a game show or, or something going on where somebody's been picked in a crowd and you see their face light up and they're excited. They're, they're enamored that they got chosen. This man, blind Bartimaeus, he was chosen to see the Lord. Can you imagine his face? And can you imagine what he would have looked like after his sight had been restored, after he was able to see? All of a sudden, the person in front of him, the very first person he's able to see is the Lord Jesus. He sought the Lord Jesus. He found the Lord Jesus, and he was fully recovered. He was healed. Just an amazing story. But nothing would keep blind Bartimaeus from seeing the Lord Jesus. Nothing would stop him. It was the most important thing to him. I want to read another example of somebody who sought the Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit to the temple, and when his parents, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Now this, this man, Simeon, he was in the temple and he was told by the Holy Spirit, he knew that when he went to the temple that day, he was going to get to see the Lord Jesus, the son of God. And he was waiting for this day for a very long time. And I know that this this picture here maybe is is maybe what it looked like, but I don't think we could really capture the joy, the happiness, the excitement on the face of this man as he held the Lord Jesus in his arms, the one who he had been promised. You won't die until you get to see the Lord Jesus. You'll get to see him. And he got to hold him. And this is what he said. Lord, you're letting your servant depart in peace. My eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Oh, my goodness. The, the, ex, the excitement this man had at holding the, the Savior and even the, the words that he said, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles. You know, this, this was, again, telling us that it wasn't just for the Jews, his own people. It was it was the Lord Jesus was going to be or, or was glory for the people of Israel, but also a light to the Gentiles. The promise that salvation that the Lord Jesus was bringing was for everyone, was for all. So this man, he got to see the Lord Jesus. He got to hold him. And if, again, if somebody had said, you're going to the temple again today? What for? You're always going to the temple. You can imagine his face. I get to see Jesus today. I get to see the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. I mean, if somebody was going to tell me that I could go somewhere and see the Son of God, nobody would be able to stop me from that. Nothing would be able to keep me from that. I would want to go there. This man, he sought Jesus. 
and he found the Lord Jesus that day. One more passage I want to read in John chapter 18. So Judas having, sorry, John 18, verse 3. So Judas having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. This is in the garden of Gethsemane. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. And again, just a, a picture of, of the scene that we read about here in John chapter 18. So the Lord Jesus was in the garden with his disciples and this mob came led by Judas, one of his own disciples who betrayed Jesus. And he came with this mob and they were going to take the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus asked them, who, who are you looking for? Who do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And when he said, I am he, they fell back to the ground. Because the words I am had, had quite a bit of significance. The power of those words, I am he, actually, it drove them back to the ground. The power of the Lord Jesus. He could have, he could have spoken a word and, and knocked them all unconscious, killed them all, overpowered them. Like even a thought, the power that he had, yet that wasn't the will of God. That wasn't the will of the Savior. He knew that this his time had come. He knew that it was his time to let himself be taken. It said in Isaiah that he was taken like a lamb before the slaughter. He willingly went. He let this mob, his own disciple be, who betrayed him, he let them take him so that he could be falsely accused. He could be tortured. He could be nailed to a cross. But he knew that he had to do that so that we could have salvation so that he could pay for our sins. They sought the Lord Jesus for his execution. We have three different stories here of ones that sought the Lord Jesus. And I couldn't get this out of my mind as I, as I was thinking about uh, the gospel. And I wanna know for you to ask yourself, do you seek Jesus? Are you looking for him? And really, who is Jesus? Who, what does Jesus mean to you? What is this man, this, this, the son of God? What does he mean to you? Things that we can say about him. He's the son of God. He's perfect, sinless. He was born into this world a man as a, as a little baby. Uh, you know, it was, as we've just uh, had this uh, celebration of Christmas, we consider the Lord Jesus being born into this world. And, and many, many in this world, they, they know this story because you really, it's really hard to, to get through Christmas without even knowing that even the word Christmas, Christmas, it's in the very word. But people, are celebrating Christmas, maybe without really thinking about who he is. Because he was born in this world so that he could die. He was born to die a horrible death on the cross. But he had to do that to pay for our sins. There's no other way for our sins to be paid for. So he's, a, he's our savior. But is he your savior? Have you trusted in the Lord Jesus and his finished work? The Lord Jesus is one who wants your heart. He's one that wants a relationship with you. And he wants you to be in heaven. And I think that's the problem today is that people have so many other things that they, they turn to, to satisfy, to, 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 to distract, to forget about what truly matters in this world 
is whether or not we're ready to meet God when we die. There's the old saying that there's two things in life guaranteed, death and taxes. We have to pay our taxes and someday we're all going to die. And that's not fun to think about, but the Lord Jesus takes the sting of death away. I don't mind that someday I have to die. I know that when I die, that I will be with God in heaven because of the Lord Jesus, because I sought Jesus and I found him. He suffered on the cross. He died for my sin. And I trusted that work. I know that I'm saved. I know that I will be in heaven and I will see the Lord Jesus face to face. Have you sought him? Are you worried about your sins or do you actually seek Jesus? Something I think we forget about is that, yes, we need to be concerned that we might die and go to hell. But more than that, do you actually want Jesus? Do you actually want his gift? Do you want his salvation? How important is it to you? If it's as important as it was to that blind man to see Jesus, he threw aside his coat, his only possessions. He screamed for the Lord Jesus to, to, to see him. And he found the Lord Jesus and he met all of his needs. If it's that important to you, you will find him. You will find your, his salvation. But if it's not, if you don't actually want to seek him, then you're lost. You're lost in your sin if you don't have the Savior. He's the only way our sins can be forgiven. That's it. He actually wants you. He's calling you. He is seeking you. But he won't force himself on you. He won't make you trust him. It's your choice. The gift of salvation is a choice. But it's free to all. And he suffered greatly for it. He went through the worst agony ever for our sins. He did that for you so that you could be saved, so that you could be in heaven. And that's the gospel. That's salvation. There's not, it's not complicated. God did not want it difficult to get into heaven. But you have to come his way. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, that's why we preach the gospel every week is because God has said he wants those who are lost to be saved. I come to seek and to save those who are lost. And we just want and pray for each and every one who are not saved to just trust the Lord Jesus, accept him at his word and be saved. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that the Lord Jesus was born into this world, that he went to that cross and that he suffered on, on that cross for our sins. We're so thankful that he's willing for us to be saved and that we can simply trust in his finished work. It doesn't matter who we are or what we've done or where we've come from. All can be saved, each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, that the only way to get into heaven is through the Lord Jesus and that we can trust in him. We thank you for this opportunity to read your word, to proclaim this gospel message, and we thank you that we can be safe for all of eternity because of him. We just pray for your word as it is proclaimed today. We thank you for the celebration of Christmas and that during this time of year, we can consider the one who was born, King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, we thank you for all that we have in and through him and ask your blessing on us now. It's in his most worthy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.